memo has now been released, and it is absolutely shocking. It is stunning. Now, this now is the biggest abuse of power corruption case in American history. Now, tonight, we have irrefutable proof of a coordinated conspiracy to abuse power by weaponizing and politicizing the powerful tools of intelligence by top-ranking Obama officials against the Trump campaign, against the Constitution, and against deep state unelected bureaucrats, all in an attempt to influence an election and then undermine a duly elected president, that being President Trump. This is something that should never happen in the United States of America, but it has. We will go line by line through the memo's findings. It shocks the conscience. It proves that the entire basis for the Russia investigation was based on lies that were bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton and her campaign. The Mueller investigation does need to be shut down. And the people responsible, who we will name tonight, Many need to go to jail. Also tonight, the memo is exposing just how wrong your media has been for over a year with no evidence about Trump and Russia and collusion. They have been lying to you, the American people, while on this program we have been uncovering the truth. It is more proof of how abusively biased and corrupt the press is in America. They have been missing in action one of the biggest stories in history. That is tonight's Friday night breaking news opening monologue. All right, there's a ton of information to cover tonight. Now, we're going to go point by point through the memo. We're going to give you important background information so we can fully explain just how massive this scandal is. Everything that you're going to hear, well, a lot of it should sound familiar because we have been uncovering this piece by piece every single night now for months. We've been way ahead of the curve, but there is new vital information that is even more damning, more damaging than anything we've told you so far. And as we have been explaining, this is Watergate times a thousand. You're about to find out why. And here are the key findings from the memo that we're going to cover in detail. Here's what you need to know. The FBI, deep state officials, they used a Hillary Clinton campaign, bought and paid for dossier that was filled with Russian lies, Russian propaganda, totally unverified to lie to a foreign intelligence surveillance court to obtain a warrant so they could spy on Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Now, during that FISA warrant process, the FBI, or at least the upper echelon, not the rank and file, repeatedly never told the FISA judges that the phony salacious dossier was financed by Hillary Clinton and the DNC. In other words, they purposefully mm -hmm. omitted crucial information from the FISA court judge so they can continue this process. James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Sally Yates, Dana Bente, Rod Rosenstein, they are all complicit in this because they, at different points, they all approved surveillance on page. Now, this part is shocking. The FBI then used a Yahoo News report that was written by Michael Lizikoff from September 23rd, 2016, about a Carter Page trip to Russia as evidence to corroborate information in the phony Russian paid-for dossier. Here's the thing. And this is critically important. The source for the information in the Yahoo News report was none other than Christopher Steele, the same author of the dossier that they were using. So the FBI used Steele's leak to Yahoo to corroborate the dossier created by the same person, Steele. This is what we call circular reporting because the FBI was pretending that they had two sources when in fact it was the same source and they were presenting that to the judge. Now, the memo is also exposing how Christopher Steele, the former British spy that, according to reports, was known to pay Russian sources, had previously worked closely with the FBI, was suspended and then terminated as an FBI source for leaking to the press about his relationship with the Bureau. We also know, independently from the memo, that in September 2016, Steele and Fusion GPS briefed in person, in person, so-called journalists, from the New York Times and the Washington Post and Yahoo News and the New Yorker and CNN about the Hillary Clinton phony Russian dossier. And Glenn Simpson testified that both the Clinton campaign and the DNC were well aware about this press outreach. They all knew it was a lie. So in other words, Hillary Clinton wanted the media to run with this total false fabricated dossier, hoping 
to lie to the American people and convince you that's a reason to vote for her and not Donald Trump. Now let's get back to the memo. Now Steele maintained a close relationship with the now demoted Department of Justice official Bruce Orr. Now remember, Orr is the guy who had an office four doors down from Rod Rosenstein and was removed from his position for not disclosing that he met with Fusion GPS both before and after the election. Now, Bruce's wife, well, her name is Nellie Orr. She worked for Fusion GPS. She was hired to dig up dirt on Donald Trump for the dossier. And Orr also revealed that during September 2016, Steele said he was, quote, desperate. This is Steele, that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. I thought we didn't like outsiders influencing our elections. Now, according to the memo, none of this was disclosed to the FISA court, which is a massive problem. I can't wait, wait to hear from the FISA judge. And this also points out in the memo that during the initial application for the FISA warrant, the head of the FBI counterintelligence division said the corroboration of the Steele dossier was, quote, in its infancy. In other words, that means the FBI never corroborated any of this, but they still presented it to a FISA court to get a warrant to spy on an opposition candidate when one candidate paid for those lies. And this is the part that is massive. The memo explains how former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe testified before the House Intelligence Committee that the FISA warrant to spy would not have been approved without the dossier. So when you put all of this information together, here's what it all means. The FBI misled and purposely deceived a federal court while using an unverified, completely phony opposition research bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton to spy on an opposition campaign during a presidential election, all to help one candidate out, all to mislead the American people. Now, that type of abuse of power, that type of corruption, that shredding of the Constitution, it is unprecedented in American history. Now, the FISA laws, which are all about your government spying on American people, they have been abused and literally to surveil on an opposition campaign to undermine later a duly elected president. We have never, ever in history seen anything like this. And it was spearheaded, not by rank and file members of the FBI intelligence community and Department of Justice. No, high ranking officials, James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Rod Rosenstein, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, likely Loretta Lynch. And we could also tell you tonight, many others we will be learning about in coming days. Many will be implicated in this. But here's the bottom line. Crimes have been committed. There is no way that they did not know that the FBI was lying to a FISA court in order to spy on an opposition campaign during an election year. They have aided and abetted what is a massive constitutional violation. Comey, McCabe, Rosenstein and others all need to be investigate, investigated and in many cases prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law because these crimes have been committed. Remember. Comey testified under oath. The dossier was salacious and unverified. Remember, he told that to Donald Trump when he was the president-elect. If that's the case, then why the hell did he use it two months earlier to get a FISA warrant? Now, of course, Comey is running scared. He's out of his mind right now. Now that he is exposed with this memo, he actually tweeted out today, that's it. Dishonest, misleading memo, wrecked the House Intel Committee, destroyed trust with intelligence community, damaged relationship with the FISA court, and an excusably exposed classified investigation of an American citizen for what? DOJ and FBI must keep doing their jobs. Here's the problem. The only thing that was dishonest and misleading in this was Jim Comey. And as I said last night, Jim, you might want to keep your mouth shut because anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. And you do have the right to an attorney. And speaking of Rosenstein, now remember, this is the guy that appointed the special counsel. Because remember, the attorney general recused himself. He appointed Robert Mueller. He should now resign immediately because his actions now prove he is incapable of honestly serving the American people as the deputy attorney general. And here's another massive revelation that I want you to think about. The entire foundation of what we now have gone through, this mess for a year, no evidence, Trump, Russia, collusion, the special counsel, 
It's been built on lies and built on a phony fake news dossier that was funded by Hillary Clinton. Now that the FBI then used that to target then the Trump campaign, then an incoming president. Now, if this never happened, there would be no Robert Mueller. And these revelations are so profound, this corruption is so deep, it is so obvious that the special counsel needs to be shut down immediately. And that's not even taking into account Mueller's massive conflicts of interest himself and how his team is filled with, oh, big Democratic donors and people like Andrew Weissman that withhold exculpatory information in cases and gets overturned 9-0 in the Supreme Court, sends people to jail, overturned Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Mueller's investigation is and has been a witch hunt from the very beginning. It's built on a house of cards, and tonight it is crashing down. Look, if we as a country, if we care about the Constitution, if we believe in civil liberties, if we believe in those protections, then the special counsel must be disbanded immediately. And by the way, nobody else will say this, all charges against Paul Manafort and General Michael Flynn need to be dropped. It's that simple. President Trump, by the way, is reacting to all this breaking news. Now, here's what he said about the memo. Take a look. I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. The memo was sent to Congress. It was declassified. Congress will do whatever they're going to do. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. And when you look at that, and you see that and so many other things, what's going on. Uh, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves and much worse than that. So I sent it over to Congress. They will do what they're going to do. Whatever they do is fine. It was declassified. And let's see what happens. But a lot of people should be ashamed. More than ashamed. A lot of people broke the law. It's more than a shame. This is so deep in its corruption. It should. shatter the conscience of law-abiding American citizens. Now, Fox News is also reporting tonight that the memo is being sent to the Department of Justice and the Inspector General, which could, in fact, lead eventually to criminal charges. We have also been reporting that this memo, believe it or not, is only about 15 percent of what's coming. This scandal is only in phase one. Now, Congressman Devin Nunes, he told Brett Baird tonight that more memos are coming. Stay tuned. Tick tock. And also tonight, now that this memo has been released, look, we've been telling you about this for a very long time. It was March of last year when we first reported that there was a FISA warrant on Trump Tower. Everything that we have been talking about and uncovering for a year on this program is now being shown to be true and exposed. In the meantime, all this while, the liberal mainstream media, they have wasted an entire year holding this country hostage with a false narrative based on a conspiracy theory that President Trump colluded with the Russians. They have and have had no evidence whatsoever because it doesn't exist. The media has been corrupt and lying to you, the American people. At the end of the day, they're nothing but propagandists, an extension of the Democratic Party and tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists that are so pathologically locked into their hate of President Trump, they don't know any better at this point. All the information we have been reporting now on this has been out there. But you have overpaid journalists, just too lazy, too rigidly ideological to do their jobs. They've been sitting on the sidelines while the biggest scandal in their lifetimes has been unfolding right before their very faces. Now, we've been talking about this issue, FISA abuse, spying on the Trump campaign since March 6th of last year, and the media has ignored it every step of the way. Here's what I said that day back on my radio show in March of last year. This is the swamp. Obama holdovers, lifelong bureaucrats that are sabotaging. This is the shadow government I've been talking about. This is what deep state means. They are sabotaging the Trump presidency. A cardinal rule of the Obama administration was no White House official ever interfered with an independent investigation led by the Department of Justice. That's not a denial that it happened, meaning the FISA court requests. And it says that as a matter of practice, neither the president nor any White House official ever ordered surveillance on any U.S. citizen. Any suggestion others. They didn't order it. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. And that doesn't mean Obama didn't know that it happened. We've known the whole time we were right. We've taken a lot of heat 
for telling the truth, but the evidence, the facts, the truth, that's what we should pursue. It's all there. It's been there. The media doesn't care about any of this. They want President Trump to fail. Otherwise, they would be reporting on this story instead of ignoring it. And now, by the way, they're doing everything they can do to try and discredit it. It's not going to work. Now, here's the thing. Facts are facts. Truth is truth. The media cannot twist and distort truth. And you, the American people, and those of you that have supported this show, we thank you tonight because you in part have made this possible. You called your congressmen and congresswomen. You asked them to release the memo, and they did. And sadly, it does shock the conscience. Joining us now, Fox News contributor, investigative reporter, Sarah Carter, Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett, Fox News national security strategist, former deputy assistant to the president, Sebastian Gorka. It was March 8th of last year, you and John Solomon on this show broke the story of a FISA warrant and surveillance of Trump Tower. And how few in the media care to follow what is the biggest abuse and corruption scandal in their lifetime. Sarah. It's it's incredible, Sean, because there was so much evidence out there, little bits of evidence, that if they just latched onto it, they would have been able to see through and seen the truth. And they chose not to. And what's even more incredible is that the Obama administration and people associated with Hillary Clinton, and now we know Fusion GPS, Christopher Steele, Bruce Orr in the DOJ, Sally Yates, Andrew McCabe at the FBI, former director James Comey, they were spreading the disinformation campaign. You know, it was interesting. They tried to say that it was the Russians, but the whole time, <clears throat> based on an unverified and salacious dossier, and those are the words coming out of Comey's own mouth, they used that to spread lies about the Trump campaign to the media and anybody they could try to share it with. And this is what's so incredible. The media bought it. And they chose to ignore the other side. They chose to ask for verification. And the entire precedence of the special counsel was based on that dossier, according to McCabe. You know, I, I even have testimony. I don't have time to play it all. We have so much information to get out tonight, Greg Jarrett. But remember, when he, Comey, met with Donald Trump, he said it's unverified and it's right. salacious. But two months earlier, he was arguing just the opposite. And, it, and the worst part is they knew where this dossier came from, and they never told the FISA court. Criminally speaking, is he in jeopardy tonight? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is just proof uh, of government corruption, and it's sad. The FBI and the Department of Justice, they concealed evidence, and they deceived a federal judge. Uh, they knew this was a fabricated document, knew they, it was paid for by Democrats and Hillary Clinton. They knew that the guy who authored it uh, said he was desperate to stop Trump, and yet they used it. They signed a document in front of a judge that said, we vouch for the reliability and authenticity of this document. In other words, they were lying to the judge. That's a crime. 18 U.S.C. 242. You, it's abuse of power. And it's, it's tragic that the people that we expect to uphold and enforce the law are breaking it. This is the proof. So, Sebastian, they, they, this is what they knew. They knew the dossier was false. They knew that Hillary Clinton paid for the dossier. They never told the judge. They knew the guy that was responsible, Steele, hated Donald Trump and didn't want him to win. They knew they couldn't spy on a Trump associate without the dossier. They were shut down the first attempt they tried to get it, and then they got it on the second shot and admit without it they never would have got it. Sean, let's just remember what happened 11 months ago. The president tweeted out that his campaign had been spied upon. He was ridiculed by the left and the mainstream media. We now know not only is it true that he was spied upon by the Obama administration, but the warrant was acquired illegally. I had a chief of police uh, text me today and he said if any of his officers had acquired a warrant while excluding exculpatory information, that officer would be be charged with perjury or abuse of power. Uh, not only that, this is fascinating. Let, let's unwind all of it. Congressman Gates just reminded me, on the 16th of May, Rod Rosenstein ex escorted Robert Mueller to be interviewed by the president to be the director of the FBI again. He failed the interview. The president wanted wow. somebody new. He didn't want a Bush-era a Bush person. The next day, 
May the 17th, after he fails that interview, Rod Rosenstein appoints him as the special counsel to investigate the president. How can he investigate the president in a subjective fashion? And lastly, well, lastly, yeah. um, what about all the congressmen and women who lied about this memo? For four days, they've been telling us it would reveal uh, sources well, and methods. That's, that's par for the course. Yeah, that, right? none of which was no, true. No Before sources Devin and Nunes. methods. Yeah. All right, let me go to Sarah. Sarah, it was about a year ago you broke this story. My sources tell me this is just the tip of the spear, the tip of the iceberg, and that there's so much more to come. I was given a percentage, about 15 percent of what is coming. What are your sources telling you? You were dead on accurate on March 8th of last year. My sources are telling me it's 10 percent of what is coming. So maybe there's even more, Sean, out there than what we expect. And this is even more important. The investigation is now going to be reversed. I know that members of Congress are going to call for a special counsel to investigate the investigators. There is going to be a number of people involved in this. Also, the information, as you reported, that's going to the IG, they're, they're going to look at criminality here. Was there anything criminal going on? And from what appearances look like, there was. So they lied to the FISA courts, allegedly, and that's what they're going to be looking at. I tell you, Sean, this is just the beginning. This is not right, the end, right. and the investigation is in reverse. Last thoughts. Where is this going? I don't know, but I can tell you a congressional source tells me that Rod Rosenstein in a meeting three weeks ago threatened uh, the Chairman Nunes and uh, wow. members of Congress that he was going to subpoena their texts and messages because he was tired of dealing with the Intel Committee. That's well, threats gotta... and intimidation and retaliation. All of you have been doing the work of the media for an entire year and sharing it with our audience. I can't thank you all enough. Um, I wish it didn't happen, though. We have a lot of cleaning up to do here. When we come back, a Hannity exclusive. The president's attorney, Jay Sekulow, reacts to this FISA memo. That's next. Please stay with us. All right, joining us now with reaction to the explosive memo detailing FISA abuses, President Trump's attorney is also the chief counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Jay, I'm calling this the biggest abuse of power, corruption case in our lifetime. This was all designed to impact a presidential election and an incoming president and to undermine an incoming president um, and to undermine an election. I want to get your general thoughts first. Yep. Well, you have to look at the timeline here, Sean, to show how dangerous the precedent that's been established by the FBI. James Comey and the FBI attempted to get a FISA warrant in the summer of 2016. They were not successful. They then moved in October uh, by adding to their request the Steele dossier. Then they get a FISA warrant. So that FISA warrant is issued. In January, before the president was sworn in, James Comey, as FBI director, meets with the president, tells him about this, as his words were, salacious and unverified dossier, but said he was not on, the president was not under investigation uh, and that not to worry about that. Yet, seven weeks before then, he obtained a FISA warrant based on that dossier. Then it was renewed a day before the inauguration and then a new, renewed subsequently again. And so when you look at just this, the chain of events, and that's what I want people to focus on, the timeline here is very, very, not only dangerous, but I mean, what did they tell the FISA court? They didn't say this was political opposition research. They didn't say it was unverified. Uh, Chris Steele leaked the information to a media source. The FBI said they cut off formal relations with him. Did they tell that to the uh, FISA judge? So I think the, the real issue here is, both as to the nature of what they did, but also what they did to the court. And I think all that has to be reviewed, obviously. Well, it, and I think it's, it's a special counsel. I think a special counsel is necessary to review this entire matter because we're not even including the Bruce Orr situation or any of that. You add all of that together, and I think it needs to be an outside counsel. Well, what happens if, if you know that this is a, a Democratic bought and paid for dossier and you know the information is false and you don't disclose this to the judge on four separate occasions. Now, if I was the judge in this case, I think I would be pretty angry about all of that. Yeah, so, you know, first of all, uh, 50 USC requires all applications for warrant. They're under oath. 
Uh, you, of course, you can't commit perjury. But more than that, I think, is it, what's at stake here is the fact that they utilized this information, knowing it was not truthful, knowing it was unverified, not notifying the court of the entire process of what went on here. But they didn't do it once. They didn't do it twice. They did it three times. And then James Comey, again, going to the president-elect of the United States and saying, hey, uh, there's this dossier out there. I'm not trying to do a J. Edgar Hoover. Those were, by the way, James Comey's uh, words. I'm not doing, I'm trying to do a Hoover on you here. It's, just, it's, it's unverified. It's salacious. Uh, it's, you're not under investigation. But yet he utilized that again to obtain the warrant. As well, he's well, telling me, the president, let me it's put not a fine point on this. It doesn't work both ways. Yeah. All right. This is because you're saying that he used this, what he called in front of then President elect Trump, unverified and salacious dossier. Two right. months earlier, he used to get the warrant to spy on right. the Trump campaign and then the Trump transition team. So the right. level of duplicity, wh which is it? Because if you thought it was unverified well, you don't get both. and salacious and you presented it to a court and you signed off on it, and that was the ter determining factor, as you point out, it was denied first in July, then right. James Comey has a big legal problem, doesn't he? he I think he does. And, and Christopher Steele, by the way, came to the FBI in the time frame that looks like it was around July. So Christopher yeah. Steele, the, the so-called you know, British spy that was getting this information, by the way, who was working on it with him? Bruce Orr, the number four, his wife, who's working, happens to be for Fusion GPS on this project. So again, I, I say this. If there was a need for a special counsel, this is one of those moments because, you know, unfortunately, again, this is not the rank and file FBI members. You've been very clear on that. I've been clear on that. But th and this isn't deep state, as people call it. This is the, this is the top. This is leadership. So, again, yeah, James Comey did, doesn't get it both ways. He can't make the statements he made and then go back on it to get a warrant. I mean, he got a warrant based on this information. And I don't care if someone's a Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, Green Party. That's not the way it works in a constitutional republic. Let me go to the very end of the memo when they talk about Andrew McCabe and his testimony yep. in December of 2017 that no surveillance warrant would have been sought from the FISA Sought. court, but, but for the dossier information, the Democrats have tried to jump on that and say, oh, oh, he didn't exactly say that. Well, I've checked with numerous sources on the committee that have confirmed he was asked this question multiple times, and actually his answer is far worse than what the memo actually states in this particular case, that in fact, they wouldn't have sought them this at, in any way without the dossier. So this is the situation, Jay. You've got... Uh, Hillary Clinton, a bought and paid for, and of all things, dossier full of Russian propaganda. Wow, pretty ironic yeah. when you think about it. Yeah, and, and the McCain and, and statement that, is which, very which, significant. Which, yep. Okay, but it's to lie to the American people to influence the election, which ratchets up the typical lying that's done in political campaigns. But then it's used to obtain a FISA warrant to spy on an opposition party and an incoming president. Now, we've studied yeah, Watergate. This is, done by, this, is by, this is done by an FBI director who, remember, uh, Democrats were calling for his removal when he intervened. And by the way, I was very critical of his intervention into the political process. I thought that was absurd what he did, that, that three-stunt maneuver he did in the summer, then in the fall. Uh, in the election, which is what is against the FBI's rule and where he conflated his job as FBI director and became the, the super attorney general, which is not his function uh, uh, administratively or procedurally, yet he did that. And I was very critical of that, but he, he, this is what he did. So, Last again, question. those people that are defending James Comey should go back and remind themselves of what they said, you know, a year ago, a year and a half Let's, ago. Let, I, I, it's interesting. Would we have had the special counsel but for all of this, Jay Sekulow? Well, there's the... There's the question, because the, so the question is, did this dossier lead to this, create this investigation? And that question is a real question that I think has got a significant legal consequence. And that is the underlying question. Did this, in this case, FISA warrant, start this investigation? And I, again, I can't opine on that. I'm not going to. But I will tell you this, it raises serious questions. All right. Well, I believe it did. And that gives justification. If I was General Flynn tonight... Uh, and my lawyers, I'd yeah. be in a room tonight coming up with strategy. Same with Paul Manafort. Um, I believe it should be disbanded, but I won't drag you into that. Good to see you. When we come back, we get congressional reaction. We check in with Freedom Caucus members, Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, and so much more tonight on this big breaking Friday news night. I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. The memo was sent to Congress. It was declassified. Congress will do whatever they're going to do. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. 
The president earlier today reacting to the stunning FISA memo, which was in fact declassified. Joining us now with reaction, North Carolina Congressman, Chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Mark Meadows, Ohio Congressman, also Freedom Caucus member Jim Jordan. Uh, Congressman Meadows, let's start with you. I was wondering at times if people were overselling this. And in many ways, I think you undersold it in this respect. I think this is the biggest abuse of power, corruption, scandal we've ever had, where you have one presidential candidate using phony Russian propaganda bought and paid for, and then you have the highest ranking people in the DOJ, in, in the FBI, using the powerful tools of intelligence to try and spy on and successfully spy on and help hopefully derail an opposition party candidate and then undermining an incoming president. We've never seen this before, Congressman. Well, we haven't, Sean, and you've been covering this for, for many, many months. In fact, when everybody was criticizing you about what you believed to be going on, today we now know that indeed it was going on. And, Sean, I can tell you probably the thing that, that concerns me the most is that this is the tip of the iceberg. We, we're already looking and reviewing other documents and other sources of information that would indi indicate other parts of collusion. And, you know, I can tell you there was no Russian collusion between this president and the Russians. But now what we're seeing is collusion actually did take place, but it was from the Hillary Clinton campaign and uh, and really trying to affect the, the election through this dossier that they paid for and was used to spy on American U.S. citizens. Congressman Jordan, I, I watched you in committees and there were times I'm going, finally somebody's saying it. Uh, I felt like I was hanging out here on a thread by, my, by myself some nights with, with some of my good partners and friends on the show. Um, but it is worse than we yep. thought. Yep. And I'm told that we might have a Grassley memo as early as next week that takes it yet to another level. Remember what we learned today, Sean. Not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. The top people at the FBI took this salacious and unverified document, this dossier, to the secret court to get a secret warrant to spy on a fellow American. And guess what? They never told the court that the Democrat National Committee and the Clinton campaign paid for it. Four opportunities to tell the truth to the court, and they didn't do it to spy on a fellow citizen. And they did that in the context of a presidential campaign. Let me As Mark just said, this should never happen in this great country. It never should. So, so Congressman Meadows, what does this mean? I would argue without all of this, what we are describing and talking about tonight, there is no special counsel Mueller. And I'm saying he needs to go yesterday because he never should have been appointed based on what we know tonight. Well, what we do know is much of the information that actually called for a special prosecutor was tainted. And when we see that, you know, you, you have to look at the fruit of uh, a, a tainted investigation. And, and it's very troubling. I, I, I believe that uh, special counsel Mueller will come back and show that this president didn't collude with the Russians. But I, I think the underlying problem is, is there was a whole lot. Jim was just talking about it. There, you know, four times they went to a FISA court to spy on American citizens. But three of those times, they did so after knowing that the very person who wrote yes. the, the dossier yeah. was not telling the but truth. But they knew it was Hillary's in the beginning. And they yeah, never they, told they the court the Without truth. Without a doubt. They, omission, that, that omission is a lie. Uh, all right, Congressman Jordan, what yeah. should happen next? What's the next step in terms of if we want to write this tremendous the, injustice the, and constitutional the, violation? The, the thing Mark and I and several other members called for six months ago, a second special counsel. We know Mueller can't expand his probe. He's inherently compromised on this. We know Jeff Sessions has recused himself. The only remedy, and I wish this wasn't the case. I don't big fan of special counsels, but I see no other remedy than a second special counsel. And I'd add one thing. Make sure they're not from the swamp. Make sure it's some retired federal judge from Iowa or Oklahoma or somewhere. Pick someone to come in and look at this entire situation so the American people can once again have confidence in the top people running these important agencies in our government. Biggest abuse of power corruption case in our history. Thank you both for what you have done you. to help thank expose you, this. The American people deserve the truth. And I have to thank all our listeners for calling your congressmen and women. You help make this day possible, but it's only the beginning. We'll need your voices in the future. When we come back, Ed Henry on the Democrats' reaction to all of this. And Joe Concha, Ari Fleischer, so much more on this Friday Breaking News Night.
And joining us now with details on how Democrats are reacting to the release of this FISA memo, Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry tonight. Ed, uh, big breaking news day. Sean, no doubt about it. And breaking tonight, Democrats are renewing their calls for Congressman Devin Nunes to be removed from the committee, which leads top Republicans to say this is a signal that the House Intel chairman actually succeeded in delivering on explosive information, despite some media outlets reporting in recent days it was going to be a dud. The memo reveals that in September 2016, former British spy Christopher Steele told the Obama Justice Department official Bruce Orr he was, quote, desperate to block Donald Donald Trump's election to the White House and the memo alleges, quote, during the same time period, Orr's wife was employed by Fusion GPS to insist in the cultivation of oppo research on Trump or later provide the FBI with all of his wife's opposition research paid for by the DNC and Clinton campaign via Fusion GPS. The Orr's relationship with Steele and Fusion was inexplicably concealed from the FISA court. Now, the current Democratic National Committee chair, Tom Perez, fired back today calling it a sham memo aimed at discrediting special counsel Robert Mueller's probe. Perez declaring, quote, we can't let them undermine our justice system to serve their partisan political interests. No one is above the law. But on that question of law, there's a lot more information we need to be digging for in the days ahead. Democratic Senator Mark Warner today suggested the dossier was only a small part of the information submitted to the FISA judge for the warrants, tweeting, unlike almost every House member who voted in favor of this memo's release, I've actually read the underlying documents on which the Nunes memo was based. They simply do not support its conclusions. But in fact, the memo asserts, quote, Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe testified before the Intel panel in December 2017 that no surveillance warrant would have been sought from the FISA court without the Steele dossier information. That suggests that the dossier was central to the FISA warrant. And we should note that after the current FBI Director Chris Wray saw this Republican memo from Nunes, Andrew McCabe was gone less than 24 hours later, so that may tell us something. Yeah. I think Devin Nunes needs to look at uh, the Democratic attacks as a badge of honor. Uh, it's sad, though, for the, for the country. Ed Henry, great reporting as always. We appreciate it. And Democrats are not the only ones trying to dismiss this explosive memo. Their allies in the Destroy Trump media predictably spent all day doing what they do. Lie. Take a look. I think the only thing that you can conclude is that you have a White House that is just hell-bent on having some kind of hand in this investigation. This is a fabricated, manufactured, hack, partisan, sideshow, circus act. The president's actions here only raise the suspicion of those that aren't sort of, you know, in his, in his sort of, uh, in his Kool-Aid orbit. You know, outside of the Kool-Aid orbit, everybody else is wondering, why is he denying, why, why is he so trying to thwart this investigation so much? This memo with regards to the Mueller probe is a dud. And, and let me just repeat that, having, having read it and covered the story for a while. As to the Mueller probe, this memo is a dud. All right, joining us now, The Hill's Joe Concha and former White House Press Secretary, Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer. Here's what we know from the memo, and, and I've actually talked to one person in particular that read the underlying documents, uh, Ari. We know that the FBI and DOJ, they knew the dossier. They knew that it was fabricated. They knew there was false information. Uh, even they said they were in the infancy stages of verifying it. And remember, months later, it was James Comey that said, oh, it's not verified and it's salacious, as he, as he informed the president-elect. They also knew it was bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton. They never told the FISA judge. They also knew that the guy who wrote it, Christopher Steele, hated the president and had an agenda. They also knew they couldn't spy on a Trump associate, as McCabe said, without the dossier. So they used it anyway. And they used it to impact a presidential election using the opponent's bought and paid for lies. I, I, you can't write a spy novel worse than this. No, it's very dispiriting, Sean. I mean, the idea that you can have a campaign pay for opposition research that then gets basically funneled over to the FBI so you can investigate your opponent. I mean, that's not how American elections are supposed to work. And what's so distressing to me as somebody who's watching this is how the press seems to not want to play any credence to this unless it supports that Donald Trump committed collusion with Russia. It's as if this story can only travel in one direction. And Sean, as you know, I say that as somebody who has supported the investigation to Donald Trump on collusion, believing we have to get to the bottom and let Mueller do that. 
But I will not turn a blind eye in the other direction, the way the press has, where they only think a story can travel in one part, and that part is to hurt Donald Trump. People in America need to know the truth, and that's why I think it was the right thing to put this memo out. With, without all of this happening, and, and, and the basis for all of this is, lends itself to what happened with Robert Mueller being appointed Joe Contra. Look, you, you study the media. You follow the media. I think this is the biggest corruption, abuse of power case story in our lifetime. Far bigger than Watergate by a long shot. The media barely touched it, and they still cling to the Russia-Trump collusion story, and there's never been a shred of evidence in a year confirming it at all. And to Ari's point, if you look at some of the headlines today, uh, this is largely being dismissed. New York Times editorial board, the Republican plot against the FBI, Washington Post editorial, the Nunez memo is a giant damaging distraction, also a joke and a scam. And let's just change some names out again, just as an educational process for the people at home. Let's say there was a dossier that was compiled by the Trump, I'm sorry, that was paid for by the Trump campaign and the Republican National Committee. And that dossier contained information that was obtained by the Russians, by a hostile foreign agent who was no fan of Hillary Clinton, okay? And then that information was fed to a federal judge uh, to, and without mentioning the political aspects of it to achieve a FISA warrant. Uh, that is a legitimate, disturbing story. And if the tables were turned here, I guarantee you, people would be very interested in that collusion. And that seems to be, unless it could be told to me any differently, that is proven collusion. And Sean, in the end, you know, there's a movie out now called The Post, right? And it has Tom Hanks as Ben Bradley and Meryl Streep as Catherine Graham. And transparency is cheered and speaking truth to power is cheered. Uh, but because that was the Nixon administration, that was 1971. Now here we are in yeah. 2018. And Kimberly Strassel says it best. Let me just get this quote in from the Wall Street Journal. She said, I have been in journalism all my life and have never, ever seen the press corps fight so hard against transparency. What was wrong with putting this memo out good point. if sources and methods were not uh, disturbed in any way, were not, were not revealed? I don't get it. Well, we've been lied to for the entire week. Ari, um, now that we know that we know there was some collusion and Hillary paid for what turned out to be Russian propaganda. <laughs> it was designed to lie to the American people and then it was designed and used to spy on an opposition candidate in an election year and then spy on an incoming president. Um, you want a special counsel for that? Well, I think you're onto something here, Sean, and I'm hoping the IG, when the, uh, the, the uh, Department of Justice Inve in in Investigative General, their IG, comes out with their report about what's going on inside justice and they have access to all the emails, they'll shine some light on this. All right. Thank you both for being with us. When we come back, my final thoughts on this FISA memo and where we go from here. That's straight ahead.